Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today I'm talking about tape drives. More specifically, the LTO or Linear Tape Open Format Drives. This was a format used widely for data storage that came about in the late 1990s. The first version LTO1 came out in the year 2000 and held up to 200 gigs of storage on each tape. You could compress the data further, but that often caused further problems and most users chose to not compress their data. Now this is an LTO2, which came out a little bit later. So are LTO drives still relevant today? Well, yes, not this particular one. This LTO2 is quite outdated and it's gonna be quite the challenge getting some software and hardware to read the tapes for this drive. Now, LTO9 came out in 2021. Indeed, the LTO format is still widely used today with the LTO9 tapes holding up to 18 terabytes uncompressed. It's a great way of storing the data offline and off-site, keeping it well away from viruses, malware attacks, and other unscrupulous activities. So the story began back in the 90s when IBM, Seagate, and HP got together to create this standardized format known as LTO or Linear Tape Open. It uses these tapes which only have a single spool and that's because the other spool is inside the tape drive. There's a very clever process that happens with a leader pin extracting the tape from the cartridge and winding it around the second spool in the drive. So stay tuned because I've got some really cool slow-mo footage of what happens inside this drive. I do also have this second LTO2 drive, which is already in a housing with a power supply, but I can't get this one to function at the moment. It needs further looking into. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be using this one. This one powers up and seems to do what it should. Now I've been given these to the channel to take a look at, just to see if they actually work and are they any good? Now these have been in storage for quite a few years, so who knows what problems might unfold. Are the drives any good? Are the tapes any good? Well, we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna grab myself a PC, pop a SCSI card in it, and see if we can get any life out of this vintage LTO2 drive. Okay, here's a PC that I can use to install this tape drive. It's a little bit more modern than what I would have liked, but it's the best I can find at the moment. So we'll give it a go. If it doesn't work with this, I might have a rummage around for something a bit older. Now this has been running Windows 7, so there's a chance it might take XP at a bit of a push. I've got my trusty anti-static wristband on. Now the SCSI card that I'm using is an old Adaptec card should be good enough to get a little bit of a peep out of our tape drive. So this card just goes into one of the PCI slots that I've got here. These ones are rather convenient. There we go. Okay, I've got my ribbon cable here to attach my drive. Should just go onto here. Right. Okay, that goes onto our SCSI card, and the other end will go onto the tape drive. Rather handily, I've already got some Molex connectors for power hooked up to my modular power supply here. Okay, here's our rather big, rather heavy IBM tape drive. I've had to remove the CD-ROM drive and the blanking plate because it's double height. So, theory says it should. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look at that. Looks like it's made for it. Put some drive screws in to make sure it doesn't move about while we're using it. There we go. Beautiful. One on the other side. All I need now is a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. And let's get this set up. I'm excited to see if this LTO2 does actually work. We know it powers up. But is it going to talk to the PC? I reckon it's time to find out. Let's get this hooked up, 
power it up and put an OS on it. Now the PC I'm using here, the hardware was unfortunately too new to use a Windows version old enough to support tape drives. They removed that from Windows 7 onwards. So I've put a version of Linux on here and although I am definitely no Linux programmer, with a few little command line prompts we should be able to get the tape drive to do something. Now there are some Linux tape backup solutions, Bacula or Amanda spring to mind, but they require a certain amount of knowledge of Linux to set up the GUI and that's a little bit above and beyond my Linux programming skills. So let's stick to some basic command line stuff that will actually show our tape drivers working. Now I have got some older hardware that I can dig out for a future video where we might have a go at putting Windows XP or NT on and using the Windows NT backup. So we've got our tape in. The first thing we can do is a command to show which devices are connected to the SCSI card that I installed in the PC. So LSSCSI will tell me. So we've got a list of drives. The top one is my boot drive. And then underneath we've got IBM Ultrium TD2. And it gives you the location here dev slash st0. Now that tells us where we can look for more information on our drive. Hopefully this next command will give me the status of the drive. Zero status. Let's have a look. Oh no, I've got an input output error. So it's not reading something. Something's not quite right with this. Well, let's take the tape out and put it back in. In the best possible IT scenario, if you tried turning it on and off again. Right, let's get, okay, let's give that another go. So I'm put an input and output error. Don't forget this tape drive is extremely old and has been in storage for a long time. So I have no knowledge if this drive is properly functioning or not, but this is the most I've managed to get out of it. Right, let's give that another go. ST0 status. Right, let's have a look. Ah, there we go. Right, we got it now this time. File number zero, block number zero, partition zero. Soft error count since last status. Now you can hear the tape is spooling back and forth like crazy trying to find the information. I'm not sure if that's normal behavior. This is my first experience of a working LTO drive. Now we will be trying these LTO2s with some older hardware. Later in the series, I'll also be looking at some newer LTO drives that will work with such modern hardware. Definitely gonna need further looking into, but then if it worked first time every time, it would be no fun, would it? Well, we've kind of got some information off the drive. It seems there's either some errors with this particular tape or with this particular drive. Both have been in storage for a good few years, so it's possible there's some issues there. Let's try and rewind the tape. Forward slash dev forward slash st0 space. Rewind. Let's go again and see if we can indeed get a rewind. Yeah, there we go. It's going to spool all the tape out onto the spool in the drive and then spool it all back in again. All very clever. Now here's where it gets really cool. This is the LTO2 drive doing the same operations, but with the top cover removed and in slow motion. So here you can see the gears working when the tape cartridge is pushed into the drive. When you press the eject button, the reverse happens and the tape rewinds off of the spool into the tape cartridge. The gears then burst into action to eject the tape out of the drive. From the side-on view of the tape drive, things get even more interesting. You can see the gears working on the top as the tape cartridge is inserted into the drive. Then the leader pin is going to spool the tape now around the tape heads and onto the drive spool. This all normally happens in the blink of an eye, so when we slow it down, you can actually see what's happening and you can see the drive heads 
moving up and down as they're reading the different tracks on the tape. Again, when you press the eject button, the tape will spool off of the drive spool back into the cartridge. When it gets to the end, the leader pin is going to take the end of the tape back around the tape heads, back into the cartridge before the cartridge is ejected out of the drive. Fascinating stuff. So here's what happens when you put a head cleaner cartridge in. You can see it's a slightly different action as the drive moves the tape back and forth to clean the heads. These tapes are slightly abrasive, so they recommended that you didn't use them too often. And you can see the tape heads moving up and down, so the cleaning tape can work the entire surface of the tape heads. So the original LT01 drives only held up to 100 gigabytes. They came out in the year 2000. The LT02s we're looking at now, which came out in 2003, would hold up to 200 gigs. And then the LT03 increased the storage even further in 2005 to 400 gigs, all the way up to LT09, which came out as recent as 2021, which will hold up to 18 terabytes. So you can see how the format has improved greatly over the years. The only downside with the tape storage is the time it takes to write the tape. So to fill up an LT02 tape could take up to around two hours. LT02 tapes are designed for up to 30 years of storage, depending on how they're kept. The LT02 tapes were generally a different color for each generation. The LT02s were usually purple. These tapes have been in storage for quite some time and they're in remarkably good condition. We've even got one that's still sealed. I wonder how long that's been sealed up for. That really is the definition of new old stock. I've even got the head cleaning cartridge here. Now this is the Fuji head cleaning tape. Gives you some instructions in there on what to do and what not to do. The head cleaning tapes are ever so slightly abrasive. So you had to watch how often you used them. You needed enough head cleaning to ensure reliable data transfer, but not so much that you were causing excess wear and tear on your tape heads. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed our little look at LT02 tape drives. I didn't want to delve too deep into the rabbit hole on our first one. Just to scrape the surface of what's interesting about these LT02 tape drives. I'll have a look in a future video at putting these two drives on one of my older PCs once I've dug it out, which has got some older hardware, which will hopefully run Windows NT or Windows XP. Then we can have a go at the Windows NT backup, which hopefully I'll be able to read write some data off the tapes. It's not quite reliable enough for my liking to use it as a viable backup option, but the newer versions of LTO certainly would be. So thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. A massive thanks to everyone that's subscribed to my channel so far, and I'll be back soon with more retro gaming, test gear repairs, and electronics kits. So take care, and I'll see you on the next one.